The only negative thing about our life lost is that it had to end at some point. I have a deep devotion for Kathy Glass. I've read all of her books, which is unfortunate because I'm now at that painful stage of having to sit and wait for the next one to be released. A Life Lost was released uh, last week or the week before, and as expected, I devoured it. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything here, so if you haven't read it, don't worry, I'm not going to say what the outcome is. But I will talk a little bit about the narrative and also a little bit about Kathy Glass if you're unfamiliar with her foster carer memoirs. So she is a foster carer and she's been fostering children for decades by this point. And, you know, the earlier books were about her life fostering when she has her own young children and the children she fosters. A Life Lost is obviously much more recent. It's the latest in the chronology. Her children are grown up. A couple live at home and she has taken on a young boy called Jackson. Now at this point Tilly is still living there. Tilly was featured in the previous book so I don't really want to say too much about Tilly's character in this. I say character, these are based on true stories. Obviously names and details have been changed to protect the identity of the individuals. Kathy Glass is also a pseudonym. Um, so I won't say too much about Tilly in this one, although I think she has a really interesting journey. I think her character development is really great. Obviously, she's getting a bit older now. And it's nice to be able to finish the previous book, but then still have more of her story told, albeit not as the main focus. Here we do have Jackson as the main focus, who is a 10-year-old boy who is going through an absolutely awful situation. He is in care voluntar voluntarily. Um, his mother, Kayla, decides to put him into care for a bit to give help because Jackson is out of control. His behaviour is aggressive and wild, but understandably, because his father died a few years ago and then his older brother committed suicide quite recently. And that's hard for anybody to deal with. And obviously his mother is grieving both of those losses. She also has two younger daughters and Jackson himself is obviously grieving. But there's something else there. It's not just that grief. He's carrying the weight of something else, um, a burden of information that he knows. And obviously as the memoir progresses, we get to find out what this is. And it's not something that I expected. It came as a surprise. Not necessarily a pleasant surprise, but it certainly made it all the more gripping. It was emotional enough, but this makes it take a different turn. And I think the story is very delicately told. It doesn't sugarcoat anything, but at the same time, it's done you know sensitively. So that anybody who is also going through a similar situation or through his, who has been through a similar situation won't find it maybe triggering or flippant or anything like that. Well, maybe triggering, but not um, treated with no respect. I think it's done very well. I can't really say any more than that without telling you what it's about. But because this thing that it's about is not the main focus, it doesn't go into it in too much detail in terms of the police procedurals and the interviewing. Kathy Glass has other books that focus on that more. Um, if you've read this and want to know any recommendations for her other books, I'd say read them all. But uh, I can select some specific ones that I think you'd probably enjoy if you want to explore that in more detail. For me, reading this, I... Well, why do I like these books? I honestly don't know. I read one about two or three years ago and then just binge read the rest of them. They're so amazing and so addictive. And... I'm not a foster carer. I probably have no interest in fostering ever, but I think if you are a foster carer or you're looking to get into fostering, this is certainly a very interesting read. Kathy Glass specializes in children with complex needs. So although this is maybe not a typical example of what a, a daily, li daily life is like for a foster carer who is fostering maybe just children who have been orphaned or you know something else like that, it does give you a look at the the challenges that a foster carer faces, both physically and emotionally. And obviously we get to meet the Guardian Ad Litem and, and it discusses Section 20 briefly. Um, so it is quite factual, but I feel this one, more than her other memoirs, is focused on the emotional impact more than the technical information. I also think it would be great if you are a parent 
I am not a parent. I have a cat, if that counts. But I'm not a parent. But if you are struggling, which is perfectly normal and natural, I think there will be a sense of kind of relation here and feeling supported by this. Certainly Kayla did the right thing in reaching out to get help and she got that help and in turn obviously Jackson was getting helped by Kathy Glass and it also talks about talks about calms a little bit as well so again if you are a parent with a child who maybe is on the waiting list for calms or waiting to see a psychologist from another unit there's some information there that may be helpful. There is as often is the case, a character in this I could not stand. I hated Sonia. I know she had the best intentions, but she really irritated me. Um, Mr. Burroughs, on the other hand, was the antithesis of Sonia, and I, and I think he was brilliant. The story is very delicately told, very well written, very engaging. I think it's brilliant. As I said, the only bad thing about it is that it, it had to end. Um, the ending as well, which I won't divulge, the ending was unexpected. And put a lump in my throat. I will say that. It's a, it's an emotional read. It's easily one of Glass's most emotional, personal memoirs. Um, but I, I love all of them. I'm really glad that this is out now because I just feel like it's what I needed to read right now. I cannot wait for the next one, which I believe is out in September. I think she's written just shy of 20 under her memoirs. So you probably have time to catch up before the next one is out. I can't wait for it. I think A Life Lost is absolutely brilliant. If you haven't read it, definitely check it out. You don't need to read her books in order. It may help, but it's not essential. I certainly didn't. Um, but I am now going back to the beginning and reading them chronologically, which is something I've wanted to do for a while. This seems like the perfect chance. A Life Lost is brilliant. I hope you get a chance to read it.